Okay, yeah, absolutely. What's going on with the patient? Okay, they're dizzy. Okay. Um, do you want to expand on that a little bit? Okay. All right, so the rim is spinning. Okay, all right, fair enough. What's that? Their eyes are moving crazy. They're having a seizure. Um, I, I don't know. Is it just nystagmus, maybe? Okay, okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'll come down and see the patient. You know, this, this could be legit. It could be a stroke. Activate the stroke team! Wait, what? It's, oh, it's been like this for 10 days. Okay. All right, we'll be right down. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So say you're in a similar situation and you're asked to evaluate a patient with acute onset vertigo and potentially nystagmus. Your very first thought as a neurologist and really any doctor is to quickly triage whether this could be central in etiology, like a stroke, a bleed, a demyelinating lesion, or if it's peripheral in etiology, like vestibular neuritis, for example. So today I'm gonna to briefly cover three really quick bedside maneuvers to help you rapidly assess could this be central in etiology or peripheral in etiology. All three of these maneuvers, handily enough, are wrapped up into one simple mnemonic. I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with hints. It's the hints test. So hints stands for head impulse, nystagmus, test of skew. But before I jump into how to perform each of these exams and how to interpret them, I just want to briefly head to the literature. So there's a paper published in 2009 Stroke Journal by Kata et al. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the methods, etc. They compared in the end uh, the sensitivity and specificity of MRI with DWI changes, picking up on stroke uh, in the acute setting, like 72 hours, versus this quick bedside hints test. Um, so the sensitivity for initial MRI within 72 hours with DWI changes, picking up on a potential acute infarct, 88%. Pretty good. But would you care to know the sensitivity of the hints test at bedside and picking up on acute stroke? It's a hundred percent. How do you like them apples? <laughs> it's absolutely mind-blowing. The hints test is actually more sensitive in the acute setting for picking up on whether you have a potential central etiology like stroke. So this is why we care. So to perform the head impulse test, you're gonna place both of your hands on the patient's head. Um, you're gonna kind of loosen their neck up a little bit, turn them to one side, and then rapidly turn their head back to center line. And you want to be sure that you're rapidly turning it back to center line so you don't cause them any neck discomfort. It doesn't have to be a big motion, it can be a small change. But you have to get a good grip on their head because it's a quick turn. All the while they need to be locking eyes and, and focusing on you and your eyes. So essentially a negative hints test would be a situation where you thrust their head back to center line and their eyes remain fixed on your eyes. Uh, they move just as quickly as the head turn. A positive hints test would be if you were to head thrust back to center line and they need a, essentially a catch-up saccade to be able to fix with your eyes again. So I've got a quick video here. This is from a Peter Johns. Um, I'll link his channel in the YouTube description below. You should subscribe to his channel. He's got a bunch of videos on this stuff. First video, this is gonna be an abnormal or positive head impulse test, which is reassuring. So he thrusts to the right and there's a quick catch-up saccade left. He doesn't get it on doing it to the left. And then to the right, we see it again. So that is a positive head impulse test, meaning that it's, it's reassuring. It's the one in the series where if it's positive, it's reassuring, it's probably peripheral. Next is nystagmus. Vertical nystagmus, however, is never normal no matter what, and almost always localizes to the brainstem. So let's pull up a video here from a Gabriel Trinidad Ruiz, I'll link his channel in the description below as well. I'm not sure what he's going on there, but I'm using his videos. So we have a really creepy person. Um, and the first thing we see is vertical nystagmus, which is never normal. 
Okay, so now looking to the right, you can see the fast component beating to the right. And then looking to the left, we've got fast component beating to the left. So that's direction changing. That's, that's a positive test, meaning it's abnormal, probably localizes to a central lesion, whether that be a stroke or a bleed, whatever. The last test on our list is the test of skew or skew deviation. Skew slash skew deviation is a vertical deviation of the eyes. Uh, which is different from exotropia, for example, in the horizontal plane. It's a vertical plane. Um, so one of the, the first ways you can pick up on this is by simply shining your pen light um, in the person's eyes some distance away and looking at the light reflex or the tiny dot of light reflected off each of the person's eyeballs. Now, those dots of light align somewhere in relation to the pupil, um, and if they have no deviation, vertical or horizontal, it should be in the kind of the same location relative to the pupil. If they have vertical deviation, you'll pick up on that with that quick test. Uh, more classically though, with the Hintz test, uh, we're taught to do the cover-uncover test. And that's simply covering one eye with them gazing into your eyes and quickly swapping between the two. If there is no skew deviation, you won't really see any change. If there is, you'll see one eye potentially darting up uh, to fix gaze, um, and then the opposite in the other eye. Uh, so I have a video for this one as well. This is from Dusan Pavlovic. I'll link his channel in the description below. So it's a little bit subtle, but the right eye is going down, the left eye is going up, right eye down, left eye up. So that's a positive test there. So there you have it, the Hintz test. It's head impulse, nystagmus, test of skew. And just remember that head impulse is the only one that if it's positive, it's reassuring, it's localizing peripherally. If you have direction changing nystagmus or vertical nystagmus, that's positive, that is concerning, that localizes centrally. If you have skew deviation, that's positive, that's concerning, it localizes centrally. So that's it for today. Before I go, I've got a quick book recommendation. It is Exploring Consciousness by Rita Carter. Uh, this is just really kind of a fun coffee table book to have around. If you're like me, I had lots of conversations in college at parties um, about consciousness and the theory of mind, uh, which got me lots of dates. Loads of really cool pictures, lots of cool scenarios that'll blow your mind. So I'll link this one in the description below as well. Pick it up if you're bored, and I'll catch you next time. Go, 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 go.